Two days ago, on November 18th, the FAA certified the Boeing 737 MAX to fly once again. This comes 20 months after the plane was initially grounded, after two crashes claimed the lives of 346 passengers. Now, following the grounding, the FAA detailed a list of actions that Boeing must perform before the plane can rejoin the skies. This includes updating flight software, rerouting internal wires, as well as revising crew procedures. The head of the FAA, Steve Dixon, who is also a retired Delta pilot testified in front of Congress that he would be testing these new planes himself to make sure they were safe. It would not be recertifying them until he felt that they were safe enough for his own family to fly on. And now after many rounds of hopefully more rigorous testing, it seems like the new 737 MAXs have met that bar. So what changes has Boeing implemented to make the planes safer? Well, it's actually kind of a long story, so let's start at the beginning. So in this video, I'll take you through a brief history of the 737 and the MAX line. I'll also be breaking down the computer system known as MCAS, which was the main culprit that brought down the entire fleet, and also what changes has been made since the accidents. I'll also be going over what the future of the line may look like going forward. So there's definitely a lot to unpack here, so let's get started. Boeing 737s are one of the most popular commercial airplanes in the world. The line was first developed back in the 60s to meet a growing demand for short-haul flights, seating around 80 to 110 passengers. Now, Because of the popularity of the initial 737, Boeing eventually developed three more variants. The second generation 737 Classic with more powerful engines and passenger capacity. The third generation, 737 Next Generation, also called NG, with better engines, more capacity, larger wings, and a more modernized cockpit. And finally, the fourth generation, called 737 MAX, with again updated engines and capable of seating 108 to 215 passengers. The 737 line as a whole was incredibly successful. It was the highest selling commercial airplane in history with over 15,000 units sold. This was a record that was recently overtaken by the Airbus A320 family, but it still holds the record for the most deliveries even today. So what exactly went wrong with the MAX 8 that tarnished the reputation of this entire fleet. In 2010, Airbus announced a brand new aircraft, and that was the A320neo, a newly engined and much more fuel-efficient short-haul aircraft than anything else that was available on the market. Now, Boeing, of course, wasn't very happy about this because this new airplane would be a direct competitor to their very popular 737NGs, or next generations. And just six months later, American Airlines placed an order for 260 of these brand new A320s, breaking a 30 year monopoly that the US aircraft manufacturers had with the airline. And this seemed like the final straw for Boeing that they needed to act fast and come up with something new. Because just a month later, Boeing's board of directors approved a new variant of the 737 called the MAX, with improved engines and even better fuel efficiency than the A320neo by about 4%. And by December of 2015, the very first 737 MAX was rolled out in Renton, Washington. Now, four years is barely enough time for me to understand even my own degree, never mind design one of the most fuel efficient aircrafts in the world. And so it probably doesn't come as a surprise to you that to do this, Boeing took some shortcuts. They decided to keep most of the original structure of the NG plane, but design a more efficient engine for the MAX. Now, this new engine was around 20 inches larger in diameter than the original and also 20% heavier. Because of the small clearance even the old engines had above the ground, these new larger engines needed to be placed more forward and higher on the wing. Now, the problem with this configuration was that it shifted the plane's center of gravity forward, making it aerodynamically unstable. The forward placement of the engines made it act as a canard that unintentionally generated lift in front of the actual wings. Now, This in combination with the extra thrust created by the engines would push the nose up during climbs and turns, essentially risking a stall. And conversely, at low air speeds, the additional weight placed further forward would push the nose down, making it more difficult to flare the aircraft for landing. 
All this meant that this new plane would have very different handling characteristics than its predecessor, the 737NG. And this meant that pilots needed to receive brand new training and type certification for this new aircraft. And this delay was not an option for Boeing. The solution they decided was a new computer system that would compensate for these differences to make the new airplane fly just like the old one. And the solution was called the Maneuverability Characteristics Augmentation System, better known as MCAS. The original objective of MCAS was to push the nose of the plane down by adjusting the horizontal stabilizer trim. This was intended for an aircraft in manual flights and also at an elevated angle of attack. The original MCAS system was designed to only correct movement at very high angles of attack and extreme Gs, indicating that the aircraft was at a very steep climb or turn, and hence at a higher risk for stalling. Now, This original MCAS system was then tested and approved by the FAA. But Boeing eventually modified MCAS to engage in broader flight conditions, including normal G conditions. I guess they wanted to make the plane extra safe. The FAA did not conduct another safety analysis on this updated system because it didn't change its behavior in extreme conditions, and hence it still met their requirements. But what the FAA didn't know was that in reality, the final MCAS system would end up deflecting the horizontal stabilizer trim up to four times that of what was originally reported in the safety reports. And to make matters worse, MCAS can be activated by just one of the two angle of attack sensors on the aircraft, meaning it was susceptible to a single point of failure, despite the fact that there are clear protocols in place to prevent exactly this from happening. Each system on an aircraft is assigned what is called a failure condition to estimate its consequences if it fails. Now, This can range from passenger inconvenience to catastrophic. And the more severe the potential impacts, the more redundancies are required to make sure that system never fails. This is why systems like fly-by-wire, which pilots use to actually fly the plane, typically have quadruple redundancy or even more. Now, The MCAS system received a pretty severe failure condition of hazardous failure. However, it still only relied on one single angle of attack sensor. Now, This was a clear breach of this protocol. And the worst part was that angle of attack sensor failures were actually pretty common. Over 200 cases have been reported to the FAA. However, this wasn't even tested as a malfunction scenario for MCAS. The system also expected pilots to react within three seconds of an accidental triggering. Now, These were the same pilots who were not even made aware that this new system existed. Another design flaw of MCAS was that it couldn't be disengaged from the pilots pushing down on the yoke, a pretty instinctive reaction in the case that it was accidentally triggered. Now, Unfortunately, it wasn't long before the world saw the deadly consequences of the series of design flaws. Back in September of 2020, the US House Committee released a report on the 737 MAX after an 18-month investigation. Now, The report concluded five main themes that led to the failure of the plane. First was production pressure to compete with a newly released Airbus A320neo, motivating Boeing to create a new low-budget plane as quickly as possible. Second was faulty design and assumptions about the system's performance, and overly relying on pilots to mitigate any danger. Third was Boeing's culture of concealment as they hid critical information about these new systems on the MAX plane. Turns out, they forgot to mention that there was now a new system that could push the nose of the plane down towards the ground. And also, the one single indicator that they had that the sensors triggering the system might be faulty, well, it doesn't work. Fourth, there were conflicts of interest as some Boeing employees acted on behalf of FAA officials to certify their own aircraft. And lastly, fifth was Boeing's influence over the FAA, namely the decision from FAA's top management to overlook warnings from their own experts in order to side with Boeing instead. So what changes has Boeing actually made to make the MAX safer? Well, For one, readings from both angle of attack sensors will now be compared, and only if they agree will MCAS be activated. And once MCAS is triggered, it will only trigger once, and can be overridden at any time from pilot inputs. And furthermore, MCAS will only be activated when all three of the following conditions are met. One, the pilot is flying the airplane manually. 2. The airplane nose approaches a higher than usual angle, and 3. The pilot has the wing flaps up. Now, Boeing has also made a series of changes that were unrelated to the MCAS system. These include modifying the wiring of the horizontal stabilizer control system, and also software updates to address potential new edge cases that were newly discovered in simulation. Now, I hope after the lessons from the MCAS system failure that these new software updates will do more good than harm. 
Now, Boeing has emphasized that these new MAX planes have undergone much more rigorous testing, both from restructured interactions with the FAA and also independent review boards from across the world. Now, Boeing will also be providing a more comprehensive training to all 737 pilots. Now, they'll be receiving a computer-based training module to better understand these new systems and changes to the aircraft software. And they'll also be tested on emergency scenarios and flight simulations. And on top of this, FAA representatives instead of Boeing officials will now be inspecting in person every single undelivered MAX aircraft before they're handed over to airlines. So what does all of this mean for the MAX line going forward and what does its future look like? Well, the recertification from the FAA is definitely a step in the right direction, but this doesn't mean that countries are eager to follow in their footsteps. For one, they might pose additional requirements that Boeing must satisfy before they will certify the plane for their respective countries. And Boeing is still working with aviation authorities around the world to conduct reviews. Airlines also have an uphill battle trying to convince consumers that the MAX is safe to fly on again. Some are already developing programs to help passengers rebook on alternative aircraft. And this is all on top of the already reduced demand for air travel during the pandemic. Because of this, around 10% of the outstanding MAX orders have been canceled, and Boeing estimates that hundreds more of the remaining 4,000 orders could be in jeopardy. It's been estimated that so far, the crashes and their aftermath has cost Boeing $20 billion. This is highlighted by the minuscule MAX orders and deliveries, especially in comparison to their competitor, the Airbus A320neo. Executives at Boeing suggested that they expected to deliver half of its remaining inventory of 450 finished MAXs by the end of 2021, and the majority of the rest by the following year. It seems like they are rightly hesitant to resume production of this aircraft until demand picks back up. But ultimately, the FAA clearance does put the MAX in the right path. And who knows, maybe one day it will even become one of the safest and most fuel-efficient aircraft in the world, as it was originally designed to be. Boeing has actually overcome similar hurdles in the past, although to a much smaller degree. For example, when the 787 fleet was grounded due to battery problems. And hopefully they will recover from this as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this update on the 737 MAX. What are your thoughts on the plane and its future? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for new videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time.